Welcome to the Education Spotlight, presented by Bay Coast Bank, Just Right Banking since 1851, and One South Coast Chamber, right here on FM 95.9, AM 1480 WSAR. If you'd like to join the conversation, give us a call at 508-673-1480. And good afternoon and welcome into the Education Spotlight. My name is Jennifer Lorenzo. I'm the Communications Manager for One South Coast Chamber of Commerce. And thanks again for joining me today. We have a special guest uh, joining us via phone lines this afternoon. And that is Dr. Laura Douglas, of course, the president at Bristol Community College. So we welcome her into the show right now. Good afternoon. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me on your show today. Oh, absolutely. It's our pleasure. So um, I think we're going to talk about all things Bristol um, for the next hour, which we have a wide variety of topics. Um, But one thing kind of right now is we're uh, jumping back into things now that um, COVID is slowly leaving us. Um, What are some things happening at the college right now? Well, we are certainly getting ready to expand our in-person services and classes. Uh, The uh, summer three term, we have three summer terms, and our third term is where we have more uh, in-person offerings. So that's really exciting for us to be able to have more students on campus and faculty on campus and, of course, our staff uh, that are helping students as well. And then as we get into fall, uh, we'll, we'll be expanding either even further and uh, we have uh, we continue to offer online courses uh, we have our online that can be taken anytime uh, you don't have to be in your seat at a particular time of day to take the class and then we do have those that are synchronous where you actually do come to your online format at, at a certain time of day and a certain day of the week and then we also have hybrid classes which are partially online and partially face-to-face so lots of different choices for students who still might be a little bit tentative coming back uh, in the pandemic. Uh, But we are also, uh, we continue to host uh, CIC Stop the Spread. Uh, That's the uh, Fall River COVID-19 testing. Uh, And we just completed uh, the regional uh, vaccination clinic that we had at Bristol Community College uh, throughout the entire first half of the year. Uh, But we are doing a special encore Uh, next Tuesday, a special vaccination clinic, and maybe we can talk about that a little later in the show. Absolutely. Now, I know, um, I think it's amazing that college can be online these days, like you mentioned. And something that happened recently is that you were um, lauded as being the number one online college in the state of Massachusetts, which is an amazing designation. So congratulations. But what does that mean in the grand scheme of things with so many colleges these days? pretty much offering a plethora of online options for students. Yeah, thanks for asking that. You know, many times people overlook that um, Bristol has a fantastic online program. In fact, prior to this pandemic, 25% of our students studied completely online. So you you look at that and you think, wow, uh, you know, we have we were a solid um, provider uh, pre-pandemic, and it actually was what helped us to transition so quickly to a very solid um, online delivery for all of our students. Uh, what a, there are lots of reasons why we are a number one provider. People often think, oh, Southern New Hampshire University or University of Arizona, where you hear the ads all the time. Well, our, our Twitter first of all, is a fraction of the cost. We have the typically the second or third lowest tuition of all the institutions in, in, in Massachusetts, if you can believe it or not. So uh, we also have students from all over Massachusetts that take our classes because it's cheaper than maybe their local public uh, college. So that's one factor, and that's always important to our students, right, the cost. Um, but we also have a great platform. We use Blackboard, uh, which is a proven uh, uh, platform uh, where it coordinates all the learning into uh, into one course. So you can email your your professor and the other students. You can go to the videos that are there, your exams. It's like a one-stop shop for online learning. So it's very, very convenient. 
Uh, we make sure that our students um, are prepared for online learning. In fact, we are going to be making our online orientation mandatory in the future, so students know what type of um, of equipment they're going to need, the, the hardware, the software, those kinds of things, and also the type of discipline that comes with being an online learner. Uh, pacing yourself, making sure you structure time in your day uh, for, your, for your learning and those kinds of things. And probably just as important as an online orientation for students is the training and support uh, that we give our faculty. So our faculty have to be trained in online learning and they, they learn all the basics of the best way to organize a, an online class. So there are interactive components, uh, creative ways to assess learning. Uh, it's more interesting and fun for students. And just as we have uh, ongoing support for faculty in terms of instructional designers who are there to help uh, all the time, we also have supports for our students. We have 24-7 uh, online tutoring, uh, which is kind of unusual. Not all schools have that. At least they didn't, uh, you know, didn't have that prior to the pandemic. And many students, many. Uh, colleges will stop that effort, but uh, we do have 24-7 online tutoring, we have peer tutors, um, and we have a number of other supports for students. We have a technology one-stop for them as well so that it's easier. You know, our students are busy and mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of time to deal with nonsense or technology issues, so we try to be there to help every step of the way, so their time is mostly spent on learning. Mm -hmm. That's amazing that you have tutoring options and things like that available online. I had no idea. It's been a little bit of time since I went to college um, and, and those things really weren't available when I went to school. So that's nice to know that there's assistance and support for both um, the students and faculty as well. Yeah, it is a it's a different day, and uh, and we are so prepared, and we you know we encourage people, especially busy adults uh, who might be working and taking care of kids during the you know when they get home from work or even during the day. We really encourage adults to try on uh, an online course for size. Uh, it is it is very convenient for those for those busy schedules. Absolutely. Well, we already um, are up upon our first break, so we're going to go ahead and take our first break of the hour. You are again listening to the Education Spotlight right here as always on 1480 WSAR AM and on the FM dial 95.9. We'll be right back with more on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Education Spotlight, presented by Bay Coast Bank. Just right banking since 1851 and one South Coast Chamber. If you'd like to join the conversation, give us a call at 508-673-1480. And welcome back into the Education Spotlight, of course, brought to you by our great sponsor, Bay Coast Bank. And uh, we'll once again welcome our guest back into the program, and that is Laura, Dr. Laura Douglas, um, president at, of course, Bristol Community College. And right before the break, we were talking about um, the fact that Bristol has been honored as the number one on online college in the state of Massachusetts, which is great, um, a wonderful designation. Um, and also the fact that, you know, a lot of students are looking for online classes and different options like that. I know one thing that we're looking at right now is getting people back to work. Um, a number of businesses and industry uh, that's in the area in the South Coast are looking for employees right now. But um, there's a lot of people that are kind of looking at starting over a little bit when it comes to their jobs. Maybe they had been furloughed or something like that, and they just kind of like, I want to do something different. And you have a number of great options for them as well. Yes, we do. In fact, uh, yesterday in U.S. News and World Report, one of our students was featured in an article on reskilling. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it reskilling or sometimes upskilling, you know, where you're adding on new skills on top of existing skills. Um, but anyway, it is skilling, and skilling is important these days. Uh, the student that was uh, mentioned is uh, Marcelo Ruas. He's uh, uh, someone who had been a carpenter, and he started to um, – uh, have some physical challenges uh, after uh, being in that profession. And so he came to Bristol Community College to learn information technology. 
Uh, he studied information technology. He did an internship at Bristol Community College. We hired him, oh, nice. uh, and he is one of our uh, wonderful um, employees. We have just so many great employees, but he's been a terrific employee, uh, and he really loves his job. And he uh, and it's been good on his body, and it's been good on his mind, and and it's been really good for stable income. Uh, and we have so many people who are rethinking uh, what they want to do coming out of this pandemic. Um, so, you know, there are some really hot programs, and uh, one of them that we have been delivering through the pandemic has been cybersecurity. We've been doing that uh, vir uh, virtually, online classes. Um, it became so hot, we had to add extra uh -huh. programs. We've gotten a lot of uh, funding from the state uh, because this is a new industry for our area. It's a critically important industry. Uh, those with bachelor's and master's degrees often can make up to $200,000 a year. Uh, and when, you know, you live in Fall River or New Bedford, for, let's say, you know, the median family income is only 40000 a year. So this is a tremendous opportunity. Uh, so we've been actually training kids who are in high school. We've started with early college and giving them opportunities to take college classes while they're in high school. But we've also been training those who are unemployed or underemployed uh, in the cybersecurity field. Um, the other area, which is a new industry that we are getting ready to train for, uh, is offshore wind at our National Offshore Wind in, uh, Institute. We do have a certificate program, a wind technician program, uh, and we also have an associate degree, uh, which is uh, like kind of like um, uh, a wind engineering type of a program. It brings in a lot of different skill sets. Uh, and it's really wonderful to be training uh, folks for these types of jobs. So uh, we have just so many different uh, career opportunities at Bristol. We have a fantastic career counseling center. I suggest that uh, you maybe go to the Bristol Community College website. Uh, we have a bot on our website. You can just put in career counseling. It'll take you right to the to the place that you need to go and call one of our career counselors who will walk you through uh, all the different steps of considering a career. Here's something else that we're doing that's, that's relatively new. It's credit for prior learning. And you might be an adult who's been working in a field and you don't have a formal degree. What we will do is assess the skills that you've learned on the job and translate those into college credit. Hmm. so that you can really save a lot of money if you don't have to take a course, right? Oh, so wow. those are some of the things that we're doing to to help uh, folks come out of this pandemic, reskill, upskill, and be ready for a new life. Wow. Have you found that um, a lot of people are interested in, I like how you mentioned it, reskilling or upskilling. Um, it's not really changing careers because I think when you have a career and you're doing something, you always pick something that you're you're kind of good at or you kind of you know know what's expected, but you go in a different direction. So I, I really like that word that you're using, but have you found that a lot of people are, are contacting the counselors and, and going over some of their options as far as transitioning later in life? Yes, very much so. And even before the pandemic, Jennifer, we, we, we often call the community college the new master's, uh, the new graduate program or the new master's degree programs because we have a lot of students who have associate degrees already or bachelor's degrees and they want to get a certificate or a skill on top of that. Uh, we're rolling out a new certificate in race and gender studies. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are a social worker and uh, you want to become more proficient in um, race and gender because of the different uh, social and uh, racial uh, justice, uh, you know, challenges that we have right now, and you want to move your organization along, and you want to do better in serving the community. That's one example of of kind of taking on kind of a graduate level type of work. Uh, another might be that perhaps maybe you're a nurse and you decide that you want to learn sign language and get a certificate in deaf studies. So we do this type of thing all the time, and sometimes combining different skill sets, yeah. like uh, a degree in one area with a certificate in another, uh, is a wonderful way to advance one's career. Absolutely. I know I've been thinking about doing some additional classes and things like that. You know, I, I've done, you know, the radio and, and communications, the marketing, and things are changing so much with social media 
media and learning new skills and different Adobe programs and Photoshop. Those things didn't exist when I was in college. So it's kind of been, as I've gone on in my career, I've, I've learned them as I needed to, mm -hmm. but it would be nice to take some of those classes and, and be a little bit more proficient in some of those things. So if anyone's out there thinking, you know, I'd like to maybe just take some classes and, and do a little bit better at my job and learn some new things, where can they go to kind of find the list if they're thinking about it and they'd like to just look at some things just to think about it before they would reach out to a counselor? Yeah, so on our website, if you uh, go to our, um, uh, business and economic development mm -hmm. website, we break down our different um, types of services. So we have adult education, which is a high school, earning your high school mm -hmm. equivalency or English as a second language. We also have community education programs where you can learn new technology skills, like like you mentioned, Adobe, maybe <laughs> social media, yeah. uh, maybe it's um, uh, photography for, um, you know, electronic postings, those kinds mm -hmm. of things, you know, whatever it may be, uh, we have a number of very short-term courses and some of them are even on demand. So uh, if you think that you might need to learn uh, pivot tables in Excel, uh, you can go online and figure out uh, when you can take the, the Excel course that uh, works best for your needs. Yep, so it's all on our website and you can always call our uh, uh, admissions office or switchboard. Uh, if you're a little confused, we can point you in the right direction. Absolutely. And I know when it comes to those things, if people are thinking, oh, I'd like to do that, um, ultimately it comes down for a lot of people, you know, what are the costs involved? I have a family, I have children, I have bills. Um, it's been kind of rough the past year or two for, for many people. Um, is there assistance available, if, you know, if people would like to go back to school? Do you have some options, some people that they can sit down and talk with to uh, discuss how to go about those things? Yes, we have a wonderful financial aid office. And I think that a lot of people are scared to think about college because of debt. And, and one thing that people should recognize is that at Bristol Community College, 58% of our graduates graduate with no college debt. Hmm. That's 58%. That's, a, no that's very college. high. I had no that's idea. Amazing. That's 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 a really great number. That's amazing. That is. It's because we have low tuition mm -hmm. and we also help our students understand uh, how they can pay for college. Yeah. So it's things like applying for financial aid. And if students are thinking for fall, they should contact our office very soon so they can uh, apply for financial aid. Uh, most of our students, believe it or not, are eligible for financial aid. Many people think, oh, you know, my parents work. I'm not going to be eligible. But it's really all about the income level. And we really uh, uh, encourage every student to contact our financial aid office to talk to the folks there uh, to get some help in applying for financial aid because it really is wonderful. There's all kinds of elements to financial aid, and some of them are grants. Most of them are grants that you never have to pay back. Uh, it's just based on income. So uh, we will help every student uh, get a sense of how they can best pay for college. Mm. And sometimes um, I, I know in my husband's work, which I'll just leave that anonymous, um, something he didn't know about, and in, in he works in Fall River, um, they offer some tuition assistance um, as well. And so sometimes you're working for somebody and you don't really realize that they offer that. So I think it's always a good question to ask at human resources or something if, is if you offer some tuition assistance you know, if I go back to school and take some educational programs to further my career here. That's right. You know, many of the employers in our area do that. I know our sponsor for the show today, Baco Bank, does that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's definitely a wonderful way for employees to earn additional degrees. I also encourage employees, though, if they are uh, um, lo looking to learn a new skill that will help them advance within their own company, that they go to the HR department and really advocate for some our support because most employers like Bristol Community College, we want to keep our employees. We would rather uh, we would rather find ways to help invest in their uh, learning mm -hmm. and their skill acquisition and keep them for the long term than have them leave. 
So uh, you can always ask. Employers can always say no, <laughs> but they might just say yes. Yeah, and they might have it and you don't even know about too, but it, it never hurts mm -hmm. to ask. So I always like to mention those things because like you said, it comes down to cost for many people. So it's nice that you have some additional assistance and, and that they have some help um, available at the college if, if people are thinking about returning to school or at least just taking a few classes here and there. That's right. And part time is a good option. Most of our students work. So, you know, working and, and going to school part time is not a bad, not a bad plan at all. Absolutely. All right. Let's go ahead and take our next break. You're listening again to the education spotlight right here on 1480 WSAR on the AM dial and on the FM dial at 95.9. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Education Spotlight, presented by Bay Coast Bank. Just right banking since 1851 and one South Coast Chamber. If you'd like to join the conversation, give us a call at 508-673-1480. And good afternoon and welcome back into the program. I'm your host, Jennifer Lorenzo, the Communications Manager at One South Coast Chamber of Commerce. And joining me this hour for the program is Dr. Laura Douglas, the president, of course, at Bristol Community College. And we thank you so very much for joining us today and giving us of your time. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> well, something um, that we've been very... Um, We've been talking about it a lot at the chamber <laughs> recently, and I know I had uh, Ed Lambert on a few weeks ago to talk about this as well from the MBAE, and that is early college. Um, and we're kind of advocating um, at the state level right now to assist us in kind of furthering some of that funding um, that is given out throughout the state for early college. So what, Tell me a little bit about early college and what is it for those who might not be aware of the offering that we have in this area? Sure. Um, so I like to start by uh, differentiating between dual enrollment mm -hmm. and early college. So dual enrollment is when students in high school take college classes. Uh, they might be doing that to satisfy some of their high school requirements or just to get a leg up um, and start uh, start college ahead of time. Uh, those courses uh, don't, uh, they're not packaged in any particular way. Uh, I know that when I was in high school, I actually took dual enrollment. I studied uh, English as well as Spanish. I was able to take six credits with me when I went to college. <laughs> not that many credits, but it was a great experience and got me ready for college. But dual enrollment is different. Uh, early college is different from dual enrollment. So in early college, we're looking to uh, help students launch a um, career on a very defined lockstep pathway. So maybe the, the career focus is health sciences. Maybe it is uh, some other type of STEM like uh, information technology. Maybe it's business and finance. Uh, entrepreneurship. It could be a number of different pathways. And typically, this is for students who have the ability to go to college, but really don't think about going to college. Maybe their parents haven't, you know, encouraged them to go to college. Maybe their parents have said, oh, I don't think we can afford college. Uh, and these students certainly have uh, the ability to do really well at, at, at college. And that's most students in high school, really. Mm -hmm. Most students in high school do have the ability. So uh, what we do is we set up a relationship with a local high school, we create the pathway, and when students graduate from high school, they may have as much as 30 credits, which is one full year of college before they go on and, uh, and go go on to Bristol Community College uh, and finish an associate degree. So imagine that, saying, saving a whole year mm -hmm. of college. Um, I'd like to give uh, two examples. Sure, go ahead. Um, and I'll give them for, for Fall River because uh, we're in Fall River um, uh, talking today. And that is a one, that, uh, one early college pathway that we created was with Diamond, um, and it's a pathway in engineering. Uh, engineering is very important to uh, our area as we prepare for offshore wind. And we developed a program where the students start at Diamond. And when they graduate from Diamond, they have one year of, of Bristol Community College Engineering. 
They go on for one year at Bristol Community College to complete their associate degree. And then they go on to UMass Dartmouth and complete a four-year degree. So in three years of college, they actually get a four-year degree. And UMass Dartmouth, with this pathway, will give additional scholarships to help make college that much affordable. Mm -hmm. So when students graduate in engineering, they're earning about $80,000 a year. It's an amazing pathway. Another example is at Surfy High School. Uh, we have uh, an early college with Durfee uh, that is uh, in business, and uh, students start uh, with taking all business classes. Uh, the classes have been, uh, over the last year, as you can imagine, they've been online classes. Mm -hmm. But even in the pandemic, the students have just done amazingly well. In, in this spring alone, we had 90% success rate. Oh, uh, so these students are engaged. They have ad academic advisors. They have tutoring. They have supports within Durfee High School. Durfee High School has a, just a great guidance team and uh, other great supporters. And, you know, these are students who never thought they'd go to college. And they're go going to go on and have really, really great careers in life. And they'll probably be the first in their families to go to college. And they're also a very diverse group of students, which is really important for our equity agenda. Mm, that's amazing that, um, and, and a lot of people think, well, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna miss out on my high school years by going to college, but they're actually at high school taking these, these classes. They're not actually on a college campus yet. Well, sometimes they are. Sometimes. Uh, at Turfey, it's not unusual for some of the students will bake it in so that they can actually just walk down the street and come to a college campus. But uh, for many schools in Bristol County where we have partnerships, uh, they are delivered right, uh, mm -hmm. right at their school. So I really encourage students and their parents to contact their school's guidance counselor, guidance office, to understand what type of early college arrangement might might mm -hmm. be there in in their schools. Um, Old Colony, for example, we just uh, graduated our first group in entrepreneurship. They graduated with 30 credits. Uh, uh, one of the students uh, even decided to go on to UMass Amherst and to study at the Eisenberg School. So mm -hmm. uh, these programs are really changing uh, students' lives. And uh, imagine saving a whole year of college tuition. It's just just fantastic. And those classes, by the way, uh, it's not like they have to necessarily repeat uh, uh, the same high school class. Often the college class will swap out for a high school class. So it is efficient and it is during the school day typically. Right. I think it's amazing too, because sometimes, I mean, even even myself, I think at a certain point, you're, you're in high school and you're kind of confused as to what you want to do with the rest of your life or your career when you're applying for college. And, and that can be that can be very stressful for a lot of people. But if you have some idea and you're and you're able to try it out for a whole year and see if you like it or not. But it seems like you have a, a pretty good um, positivity rate of those that take these types of classes in one particular area and then do go on to college and complete their degree in that field. Yes, you know, uh, we have our, our student Senate president, Emily, she just graduated um, with a degree in liberal arts from Bristol Community College. Um, and she uh, did this uh, uh, at 18 years of age uh, because she she took um, dual enrollment courses. It was not an early college, but it was dual enrollment. And in her liberal arts program, she decided to take some art classes. And she decided that she really <laughs> likes art. So she's continuing with, on with us, even though she's got her degree in liberal arts, uh, to take some uh, art classes. Uh, and then we'll transfer on to University of uh, UMass Dartmouth uh, to study uh, probably in their studio arts program. So she's continuing on. Uh, those classes will transfer to UMass Dartmouth. So she's uh, playing it really smart uh, <laughs> and finding a way to save money through her college career. And I think that's fantastic. Absolutely. Now, I know that this program um, or early college is offered at Durfee. I know through the Chamber Education Committee, as far as reaching out, um, looking at getting some more state aid to continue with some of these programs, it's all about expanding early college at some of the other schools in our area that may not offer it as well. 
That's right. Uh, in Massachusetts, I believe there are only 19 early college designations, and Bristol Community College is one of them. Uh, so we were early in the game, uh, and our designation has been with Derby High School. But we will be uh, working with uh, New Bedford High School to uh, help them become a designated school as well. But even though uh, uh, we don't have a designated program, let's say, at some of our other schools, um, we have found ways to uh, uh, access funding, sometimes it's other grant funding, mm -hmm. to offer early college programs for our students. They are so successful that this is really the best way for us to create a college-going culture in Bristol County. That's amazing. Now, if, if parents are listening, when when's a good time, or if even students are listening, <laughs> I know it's later on in the day, so they might be listening. When is a good time to talk about something like this and learn about these programs? Um, you know, go talk with a guidance counselor. What were you looking at as far as, you know, being in school and being in what high school um, grade would we start looking at that? Yes, so it's always good to do that in the spring as uh, early as you can. Uh, as students prepare to register for fall classes in high school, mm -hmm. uh, it, it would be good to know what is available. Mm -hmm. So even you know, even if a student has already uh, hasn't thought about early college, you can still go to your high school guidance counselor, uh, talk to them about what opportunities there are for to access college classes while they're still in high school. So whether it's dual enrollment or early college, why not try it? It's a wonderful opportunity to um, learn um, some really good skills, understand the pace of a college class, uh, challenge yourself, and, and really a great opportunity to um, understand um, uh, what you're going to be in for. We know that students who graduate from high school, having taken some college classes, are much more likely to graduate with a four-year degree than those who haven't. So again, it's just more evidence about getting prepared for college. So talk to your guidance counselors yeah. and we will, uh, we'd be happy to help <laughs> as well if we can. And even if you're a freshman or a sophomore, I don't think it's too early to talk with them about participating in this program later on. No, in fact, some of our wonderful charter schools, uh, such as Argosy, um, they just graduated their first uh, senior class, uh, and uh, those students graduated with about 30 credits of uh, Bristol Community College credits, and um, they started their freshman year of high school. So uh, some people think, wow, that seems awfully early, but the evidence uh, seems to be more and more clear that starting at an early age really helps to develop those rigorous ac academic skills, which will help a student in college. Hmm. That's amazing. I think that's I think that's definitely something to think about, you know, and especially because you're leaving with that skill set, and uh, you know, that's a year of college under their belt already as well. So, it's it's great on both sides of the aisle for everyone as well. And we're still kind of advocating at the state level to see what funding may still be available then for these types of programs. Yes, you know, it looks as though the um, the state budget uh, has given um, several million dollars more to early college, which we are so grateful for. Uh, and we recognize that as early college gathers steam, uh, it will be more and more important to infiltrate all of our high schools with opportunities for early college. So, uh, you know, if you have a chance, if you're an early college student or a parent of a child who's been in early college, uh, don't hesitate to contact your local legislator to say thank you for the investment and to tell the story of how important early college has been in shaping a young mind. Welcome back to the Education Spotlight, presented by Bay Coast Bank. Just right banking since 1851 and one South Coast Chamber. If you'd like to join the conversation, give us a call at 508-673-1480. And welcome back into the program. My name is Jennifer Lorenzo, the communications manager at One South Coast Chamber of Commerce. And our guest uh, this hour has been Dr. Laura Douglas, president, of course, at 
Bristol Community College. And we thank you again so much for taking your time out to be with us this afternoon. I know we've talked about a plethora of topics <laughs> um, for the past 45 minutes. And one thing that we did mention at the beginning of the show is how active Bristol Community College has been um, all of your area um, hubs, I guess you could say, or, or branches. Um, in regards to hosting COVID testing sites and providing some assistance for everyone in the times of need that we've had over the past year and a half with this pandemic. Yes, you know, we've been very, very vigilant at Bristol Community College in, in really being a good community member through COVID-19. You know, uh, COVID-19 um, didn't just affect um, our employees and our students. Uh, it really affected uh, all the families in our communities um, of Attleboro, Taunton, New Bedford, uh, and Fall River. And, you know, all those children that were in and out of school as well. So, uh, you know, education is really important to us, as is, you know, family, uh, the importance of family and community. Uh, so we started uh, right away uh, as soon as we could to support community efforts. Uh, we were the first to provide a vaccination clinic for first responders and then the rest of the community. Uh, that vaccine vaccination clinic just uh, ended uh, last week uh, because we're going to different formats now in Massachusetts. Um, but uh, the end of, at the end of last year, uh, we began hosting the drive-through CIC uh, COVID testing center, and that will continue at least until uh, September. Um, and we've also been hosting uh, additional vaccine clinics uh, where we can. Uh, we were called upon um, by the White House to participate in the COVID college challenge. Uh, and we are one of four uh, uh, community colleges in Massachusetts that has agreed to be a vaccination site for a special event. And that event is going to be next yes. Tuesday, uh, June 22nd from 2 to 6 p.m. at our Bristol uh, Community College Fall River Campus. We have the Pfizer vaccine, so anyone 12 years and older can come for that. Everyone who comes will get uh, not only their vaccine, but a $25 stop and shop gift card. Uh, they'll also get free giveaways, free food and ice cream. I think the hot dogs and hamburgers <laughs> and those kinds of things. We've got music, but then we also have a number of uh, opportunities for uh, other prizes. So we draw uh, for uh, $50 gift cards to the Narrow Center for the Arts in Fall River. Mm -hmm. $100 stop and shop gift cards. Who doesn't love free groceries? <laughs> a, laptop, a laptop computer. And then this is the big one for the drum roll. We're going to be giving out $20,000 in scholarships wow. and free classes at Bristol Community College. Um, so this is really important to us. We want all of our students to come back in the fall uh, fully vaccinated. We want those kiddos 12 and older to be vaccinated. It is more important than ever as this Delta variant yes. is taking root in our communities. Uh, if, you, if you don't believe in the vaccine, come and get it. Do it for the kids. The kids need to have a summer. They need to be out having fun. They need to go back to school in the fall. Um, and there's another bonus. Uh, which is the Vax Millions program, right? Oh, yes. Yep. The state just uh, put that through. I think it came through this week at the beginning of the week. Um, so right. I think it's kind of a, a lottery. A lot of other states are doing it. If you have your vaccination, you get put into a pool for a lottery and you could win. I think it's a million dollars. So that's right. Well, you have to be fully vaccinated and you need to be fully vaccinated by um by the end of July in order to participate because red, I think the first drawing is July 26th and there are five $1 million prizes and also tuition. So I, I think the Boston Globe said today that 
um, your chances of uh, winning this lottery are much better than Powerball and any of the other uh, mega millions. So um, if that won't get you to get vaccinated, I don't know what will. <laughs> that's that's nice. So, that, yeah, it's, it's amazing that you're doing it in the community too, because I think all of your branches, it seems like everyone knows where Bristol is in the community, no matter if you're in, you know, Taunton or Attleboro, like you mentioned, and Fall River. It's a great location. You have plenty of parking. It's easily easy to navigate. Um, so I think it's it's a great option to um, are, are you planning on doing something like this in the future if this is successful? Well, we may continue to do this. Um, we've been asked uh, if we would, you know, we are expecting sometime at the end of summer or beginning of fall uh, for a vaccine to be approved for uh, kids that are five and older. That's one of the things that we are, you know, all reading about in the news and we think, wow, how wonderful that would be. Uh, and we have a great relationship um, with the uh, local departments of health mm -hmm. in all of our communities. Uh, and we would, if we were asked, we would do it in a heartbeat. Uh, we have, we know exactly how to set up the clinic. Uh, <laughs> we've got the roadmap. Uh, and you're right. We're very, very convenient. Everybody knows where we are. We have the space to do it. Uh, and I think we would be honored to be asked, quite frankly. It's uh, uh, community is our middle name, right? Bristol <laughs> Community College. And, you know, the good, the health of a community is, is, is important to us as well. So uh, we will do whatever we can to support this effort to crush this pandemic. And that again, um, if people are just tuning in, um, the clinic will be held on the 22nd, which is next week. And I think it was a pretty good, I don't have the flyer right in front of me, but would it tend to... Is it it's 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Oh, so okay, 2 to 6. Who are working, it's okay. <laughs> those people who want to come after work, they can and get dinner. You know, why not come and get hot dogs and hamburgers and ice cream? And uh, you don't have to register in advance, but if you want to, you can register at www.bristolcc.edu back, uh, backslash vax up. Okay. Um, so just remember, go to our website and then at the end, do a backslash and vax up and you can go and register for the vaccine. But it is not ne it is not necessary. And we really hope that we can um, advance uh, Massachusetts in getting to this goal uh, of everybody vaccinated and, and 160 million vaccinated by July 4th. Mm -hmm. Well, I know we um, we have about two minutes or so left in the program, and and again, it's it's so great that you've joined us this afternoon. Is is there anything you would like to offer? Some final thoughts on anything? I I know so many of the faculty members are probably looking forward to getting back on campus um, this fall, and uh, I think everyone is just kind of getting ready to getting prepared to kind of go back to school and get back in a new rhythm in the fall. Yes, we're uh, we're all starting to come back, and uh, happy, very, very happy to be back. And I just want to say that you know, during the pandemic, so many plans have been put on hold. Uh, lots of students decided not to go to college. They said, "I'm going to take a gap gap year. I'm going to work or whatever it is." But remember that when you put your education on hold, there's less of a chance that you're ever going to come back and do that degree. Or it gets harder when you get kids or uh, a spouse or mm -hmm. have other obligations. So for those students who have put off education, you know, come and see us, call us up, uh, go to our website. We'll help you register for classes in the fall. We have academic advisors. We have financial aid advisors, uh, career counselors, everything that you might need to, to get a career. And today, more than ever, a college career is really, really important to be able to earn a good wage and support a family. Uh, and we want every member of Bristol, in Bristol County to have a sustainable career and to be able to enjoy all the great things in life uh, including good good health, which comes along with higher education. So that's my last minute pitch, Jennifer. <laughs> well, again, it's it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm sure we'll have you back on the show um, within the next couple of months. We're going to be carrying on the show for a while here, and you can catch us every week, same time, same channel, and all of that good stuff. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend, Laura, and it's been a pleasure talking with you. 
Same to you, Jennifer, <laughs> and have a happy Juneteenth and Father's Day weekend. All right, and everyone out there as well. And of course, thanks for joining us today on the Education Spotlight. Right here is always on 1480 WSAR AM, 95.9 on the FM dial, and we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.